All right, guys, welcome back. We've got a really cool one this time. We've just been building this mad target. Works absolutely beautifully. Made out of an old table saw blade. Pretty cool. <laughs> you all said you wanted a resetting target after the old um, pellet catchers, so I thought we'll have a little go at it. It's turned out brilliant, so I'll get the footage up now. Hi guys, welcome back. I've got a really fun little project to do today. I've been looking forward to starting this one for ages. We're going to turn this saw blade into a knockdown and reset type target for up the farm. Hopefully, given the size of the bore on this at 30 millimeters, this will be the perfect candidate for shooting at 100 yards and potentially even further. We're going to modify these little spinner targets that I bought off of Amazon. Now these were £7.30p for the six, so you can't really make them for much cheaper than that yourself, especially if you haven't got angle grinders and stuff like that. We're going to modify these ever so slightly so we can turn them into a knockdown and reset type paddle. The whole build is going to be done with very basic hand tooling in the little shed here. So if you've only got a basic workspace, whatever, hopefully follow the instructions today and you should be able to turn yourself out something pretty decent. It's going to be quite fun. And it's a really simple and decent little setup to turn these into a knockdown and reset type affair. So let's get stuck in, shall we? Right, five mil drill. Carefully, carefully. Right, that should be good enough now. We can run the old tap through that and we're going to tap it M6. Right, there we go, drilled and tapped M6. I've just gently put a bolt in and just nipped it up finger tight. Now that's how it's going to sit behind the face plate. So this would be the main target, so this would be the main hit zone. And when we do hit it, it's gonna drop down. It's just gonna spin on the threads and effectively undo on the threads itself there. We're gonna have a smaller hole below the main hit zone. So that'll be our reset paddle, if you like, in its lower position. And when we hit that, We'll stand back up again and it will stay in the upright position as the threads have bit each other. So it can be a really simple setup. All we need to do is put a reference mark on the end here so we know where the upright section is, where it gets tight on the bolt. And then we can set this into the upright leg section before fitting the face plate on front of it. So yeah, really cool, eh? Simple. Nice. Right, so I've got this piece of aluminium angle. This is going to be the main leg, if you like. It's going to have a little spike on the end as well to be the ground spike. It will also then support the cutting disc in front of it as the face plate. But what we do need to do is drill a hole into the side of the aluminium. Now, I've got a couple of conveniently placed holes already, but what I'm going to do is open that one out to six millimetres so that my bolt can go through. And then I can put a couple of nuts, one either side of this, and then we can index it so that it stands upright where we need it and then we can put the face plate on the front so a really simple affair so all I'm going to do is quickly open that up try not to drill through my bench right so we'll grab a couple of little locking nuts for that and all we basically need to do is fit the locking nut either side of the aluminium leg there and we can set it in the upright position. I've put a little reference mark on here so I can see just to make my life easier, but that is the extent of the working part of the target. It's so simple. Then we need to work out how we're gonna drill that cutting disc and bolt it in front of this. Let's do it.
Well, that's pretty awkward, but that's pretty much the extent of it now. So in its relaxed position, let's say we're gonna have a second hole below the main hit zone. When we reset it, we'll stand back up again. Right. Hopefully we should have enough retained energy at 100 yards to reset that easily. So I should think that's gonna work pretty well. Now, of course, depending on what you've got, I need to clean the back of this up. I cleaned the wrong end off typically earlier on, but that. simply. You could use it just like that without the faceplate on, but I like having a faceplate in front of the target. More than anything, it gives you some history. If you start missing, if the wind catches you out, at least you can then see where your pellet struck the faceplate. It'll give you some history, and then you can maybe make allowances for the windage, or if you have to make elevation changes. Having the faceplate certainly makes it a lot easier to get to grips with what your wind's doing. Down the line, long term, it will help you get a better judge of what the wind's doing. So now we need to work out how we can fix the faceplate in front of this. Right, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not we can actually drill this easily. I don't think that it's going to be that hard. I think the outside of these are hardened, but I'm pretty sure that the middle of these discs isn't hardened so that they don't fracture when you use them. But I'm pretty sure that the outside, the teeth themselves are hardened, but I don't think the midsection is. So I'm going to attack that with a cobalt drill a bit quickly. We're just going to bang a six mil hole through there, all being well. Maybe start at four and open it up to a six. We'll see how hard this is, but let's give it a little go, shall we? Dotted all right. That's cool, that um, drilled really nicely. What we're going to do then, I'm just going to add another little hole a bit further down. What have I just done with my centre punch? Little bit of lube. Okay, that drilled lovely. Right, I'm going to open those out to six mil. Right, perfect. Just going to open up the holes in here. We'll offer it up, we'll bolt the first one on, and then we'll use this as the reference point to put the second hole in and bolt it all together. Now, I could probably countersink these. It's quite thin, but I think for the moment, I've got a load of dome-headed bolts, which we'll probably use, but I think we'll have a little look and see whether or not I end up countersinking it. So we've got a flush front. Make sure everything's all lined up and lift that up, then we'll flip it over, mark it for that second hole through. This is starting to look like something a bit dangerous now. Let's carefully turn that over. So we're making sure that this is all referenced where we want it. Actually.
Right, nice, let's get that last bolt in. Right, I've just loosely put that bolt in for the moment because we need to strip it down, clean it all up and everything anyway. Right, what we need to do now is just put a mark on here. And decide on the size of the reset hole. So, let's, um, what do you reckon? Somewhere like that, I do. Right, I've got a rough centre line there now. It doesn't actually matter. As long as your hole, the reset hole, doesn't overhang the paddle itself, you could drill it slightly off centre if you needed to increase the distance between the two. I think what we'll do is have a look at the hole cutters and things. I think we'll see if we've got something around a half an inch or thereabouts to drill the reset hole. So I'll have a quick nose and see what we've got. Right, I reckon that might be the one. Seven eighths of an inch, 22 millimetres. Can you see that? Yeah. I think if we're talking long range, 22 is probably going to be a good, decent size. So I'm going to just dot that, get it over in the vise, get that drilled and see whether or not it'll actually go through. Hopefully that hole cutter will drill that all right. It seemed to drill all right with the cobalt bits, so it should drill all right with those, I should think. walking a little bit. Probably end up with an inch hole by the time we're done. Yeah, that's going to be warm. Nice. Nice and slow, decent bit of pressure on it, it cuts through that right actually. Hmm, not bad. What have we actually ended up with? 22 and a half mil, so it's opened up just a tiny little bit. So we've got a 30 mil bore, so that's our main target. Then the reset paddle there, even trickier, 22 and a half millimeters, nice. Right, right, we're almost done. So that's the target itself. That's the backing plate. I need to strip it all down, get it painted, reassemble it all nicely, tighten it all up. But that's ready to shoot. There we go, then we've got the reset paddle there. Once that gets hit, it'll stand back up again. So hopefully once it's all done, give it a paint up. I need to just work out what length I need the actual ground spike for. I wanted my target slightly higher out at 100 yards. When I was shooting the Crowzilla, it was a bit close to the ground. So I'm probably gonna cut it off about here, but I think that's gonna be a, probably need to try it. So I think what we'll do, we'll strip it down, start cleaning it up, then we'll paint it, then we'll take it out the farm and work out what length we need to just finally trim that ground spike off to. So yeah, overall pretty good, looks good. Give it a nice tidy up, deburr this a little bit better, get this all cleaned up. Job's a good one. That looks really cool. Right, let's get the XTI out and we'll give it a little go, shall we? Right then guys, we're here. I've just given it a quick paint. I cleaned it all up at home. It looks fantastic. We're only short at the moment. I've just had the um, XTI all apart. I've just put on a different trigger blade and a few other things. So we're just gonna keep the range short, just test the target out, see whether it actually works and how reliable that reset mechanism is. 
So we're only at 25 yards. We should be somewhere near a zero. Although, as I say, this has all been apart. So let's have a quick go, see what we can do. I need to move the position of that trigger blade. straight down. I think what I will need to do is paint the back of that paddle so that we can see it at the moment because it's stainless. Well actually I don't think it is stainless to be fair, it's magnetic but it looks more like it's galvanised them little paddles. It's a bit tricky to see now. Let's see if it resets shall we? I've got a bit of a split on the left edge and it did reset. Let's have another go. I think I need to give this a couple of clicks. Right, that seems to be working a treat. We haven't got the time or the weather. And in fact, the backfield where we shoot 100 yards from at the moment with these storms, it's really, really wet out there. So we need to give it a little while before it dries out a bit. That resets perfectly, that's brilliant. I mean, tape's come off. I stuck a bit of green um, duct tape on it. I need to paint the paddle, maybe paint the paddle red or something along those lines. That works brilliantly. I'll tell you what I probably will do is add a little bit of foam when it drops down and comes and contacts the back of the saw blade. It's making a bit of a crack, so I maybe Put a tiny bit of foam on the paddle itself or on the back of the saw blade so that when the paddle comes down it doesn't resonate so much. Oh it didn't reset very well then. Let's try again. Maybe I split it again on the left edge. Huh. Got a split on it again. I need to give this a few clicks. I can't remember what we were using in this last time but anyhow the target's working. We've actually built a thing that works, guys. That's fantastic. I really like that. Built from scraps. Didn't really cost a lot. All we bought was one little paddle. Basic tools. Happy with that, guys. Right, I'll see you in the next one.